This is going to do all this cool stuff that might just go. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant. Everybody watching us live in the pre-show, how's it going? You can come check us out every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on Twitch. You can probably find it. You got to do that to TV. Every now and then I forget. Like, just yeah. have senior moments. I'm like, twitch.com. I'm like, that's not Twitch. Forward slash Linux Gamecast. Mm -hmm. Bunch of stuff to talk about this week. We got an old blast from the past browser that kind of works. We compiled it right before the show just to show it off to you. A new yeah. desktop called the desktop, just because that's not going to get confusing. And yeah. two <laughs> bits of really good news for the Raspberry Pi. But before we get started, Jill uh, did a <laughs> photographical essay of sorts yes. from your trip to the <laughs> sure Ren did. Fair, where yeah. did, did, did people smell accurate? They never get the smell quite right. Uh, <laughs> Actually, yeah, there was smell of patchouli and and whatnot in the air <laughs> yeah so so steve has been and i actually yes we went to the renaissance pleasure fair here in la last sunday and we had a wonderful time i actually uh put a lot of pictures of our trip in our discord chat and something really cool happened so steve actually wore a costume that he put together it is a peasant outfit with a very unique and whimsical twist. He wore a bird's nest on top of his head, complete with real twigs and painted eggs and a fake crow that he engineered to flap its wings. <laughs> and he was actually the talk of the Shire and, and many people took pictures with, with him and he would say, it's not a hat, I just haven't bathed. And... The other other thing he would say is, I fell asleep under a tree and woke up a little fuzzy headed. <laughs> and, and many people were coming up with some very, very clever jokes back and uh, calling him everything from a bird brain uh, to, you know, there is a, a nest upon your head <laughs> that was that was used quite a bit. But one of my my favorite one's when was when he said, I fell asleep under a tree and a wench exclaimed, well, the yoke's on you. <laughs> that was, uh, it was just a magnific magnificent costume that stood out in a crowd of 20,000 people. And I'm just so proud of him. He was, you know, he was the, the talk of the event. And there's something else happening to today, Ven. It just kind of came upon me real quick. Well, <laughs> well, I see, I'm looking at the show notes and you're like, I'm a year older. And I'm like, yeah, OK, it'd be a lot. Well, what are you going to say? I'm like five years older. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's my birthday today. I am a year older. <laughs> I'm I'm in my mid 50s. So <laughs> but I'm I'm a year older as of today and I don't feel older. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> but I. The only thing I was sad about is my husband couldn't be home today. Uh, we had thought about, you know, maybe doing a Disneyland trip today, but he just had to had to work uh, too long today. And too hard. So this weekend, we're definitely going to be doing something. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys can go ahead and get some chicken in celebration of that hat. Oh, yeah. There we go. Some crow meat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was the other thing he used. He goes, I just need my frying pan now. <laughs> it's like eggs are just about to hatch. <laughs> nerds. Yes, nerds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, this morning I went and checked and I'm like, hey, look, they go and showed up. What's that thing? This thing. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's next to a battery. What Yay. is that? It's a square. It's a square next to a battery. What type of battery? An Amazon Basics rechargeable because mm -hmm. why would you not have rechargeable batteries in 2024? It boggles my mind when I see somebody <laughs> buy a pack of alkaline batteries. And I'm like, dude, I've like buy a set of rechargeable batteries maybe once every six years and I'm good. So pretty small. Uh, it's about a quarter height. Of a double A battery. Mm. This is the best to scale I had in the studio. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, about five double A's uh, lengthwise. And we go to the next one. You see what it is. Da -da -da. This is the HPLE desk. Yes. 
And you're like, yeah, whatever. It's a little micro PC, whatever. This thing's got a Ryzen 2400G in it. Yeah, Ryzen 5. <laughs> it's not ancient. Now, I have to look up. I want to poke this thing with Linux. Why? Because I got a bunch of questions. I got a bunch of questions. I went Googling for them. And I'm like, why? This is another like Arc A3 Arc situation. <laughs> no I'm like, why, why is no <laughs> one documenting this stuff? And, uh, you know, just a bunch of things I want to find out about it. What you can get away with doing. Because this is a real PC, man. I mean, mm -hmm. AM4 is, they may release two new CPUs for AM4, you know? Yeah. I know it's been around for a while. These things have gone on fire sale recently. and. I didn't have a chance. To, I didn't even think about it until yesterday, and I never went back and looked it up. I'm like, the market's flooded with these. Everybody's got a billion of them, and they're cheap. This thing originally yeah. retailed for about seven hundred bucks. You know, it wasn't just insanely expensive, but you know, it's seven hundred dollars for mini PC. That's like Nook territory, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's got Vega, you know, integrated graphics. And I'm like, yeah. Now, now they're like a hundred bucks. What I'm guessing, yeah. what I'm guessing is like companies dump these because, you know, it's HP. Like, why would a company dump these? I, I, I do not know. You know, before the end of the show, somebody mm -hmm. might be able to look this up in <laughs> chat and be like, well, actually, then and I'm like, cool. My working theory that I've not checked is I, what do you want to bet you can't install Windows 11 on these? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like the TPM nonsense yeah. or something weird like yeah. that. that. That's the only thing I can think because. The market is flooded with these. Yeah. Like it's got eight gigs of uh, memory RAM in it. They're upgradable to 16. They got SSDs. Some of them have NVMe. I had even cracked it open. It just showed up and took a picture of it. I don't even know if it cuts on. Let's hope it cuts on. Why? Because I'm waiting on some testing equipment that I've ordered. Nice. Yeah, we're going down that road, kids. Buckle <laughs> up. Stay tuned to interfacinglinux.com <laughs> where you can always find uh, there's a ongoing thread called uh, just upcoming projects in the general forum if you want to keep track of like things that just show up may or may not do a video like there's stuff in there that i haven't gotten around to yet but you're like hey when are you going to get around to that and i'm going to be like shrug emoji i don't know <laughs> that's what i got going on let's go ahead and hop into Aww. what caused me to <laughs> compile a web browser in the pre-show yeah Vin, just that out was of cool morbid curiosity yeah, so it has been nearly nine years since one of my favorite open source lightweight web browsers has been released. Dillo! Wow, do you remember that name? So Dillo 3.1 is out, and there hasn't been a release since version 3.05 in June of 2015. And Dillo doesn't support all frames. It does support some, not all frames, embedded media playback or JavaScript and viewing most of the modern web, but it can be installed and run in on very old hardware, like several of my 486s that I have. <laughs> Dillo was great on those machines. And Dillo is actually the browser of choice for several very small Linux distros, such as Darn Small Linux. I'm not gonna say the, the real name at the beginning. It's Darn Small Linux, so. <laughs> Why don't you just get the hat in word for yeah. half the show? Yeah, I didn't get the hat out, my DSL hat out this time. <laughs> but Dillo is actually written using the Fastlight Toolkit, and version 3.1 has several new features and bug fi fixes, including support for transport layer security, which is the successor to SSL, support for floating HTML elements, improve, it has an improved manual with new additions, and more configuration options, including support support for min width, max width, min height, and max height. And you can switch tabs using the mouse wheel by default now. I'm really happy about it's that. It's got tabs. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> and oh boy, Ven, I just I remember installing Dillo on my Pentium Pro and my Pentium Three back in the late '90s, <laughs> 1999, and on my 486s. I mean, I had it on every machine and it was it was a great way to get those old machines up and running and viewing the internet and looking at web pages and doing reading and such i gotta think of like if i had a vintage mm -hmm. computer collection i would only run a period appropriate operating systems on them yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well actually now uh, which means i would be running netscape communicator on them <laughs> why because that's the browser you used back in the 90s on linux if you needed to 
Browse the web? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. were talking about that in the pre-show. I'm like, we there's were. always been like these offshoot browsers, and like Dilla's always been around. I mean, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like Mosaic and things like that. Yeah. And you know, that, that's why we like jumped on like Netscape and Firefox and Chromium, and like that's kind of went crazy. But I want to give you a little demonstration. Yes. A little demonstration. Okay, we got the nine to five Linux. Uh, all this is going to be linked in our show notes. So this is what it looks like on um, Chrome Beta. That's what it's Yay. running on right now. Well, let's go ahead and switch over to the Dillo version. Nice. Workable. Clean, easy to read. <laughs> ish. I mean, we can kind of, that's as far as we can zoom in. Yeah. Wait, never mind. It doesn't zoom at all. It's just, that's just scrolling. Never mind. There's Ubuntu 24.04 numbat. <laughs> and if we want to go over to interfacingletics.com, well, hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be a bit knackered now jill yeah. said uh the, let, let's go to wait let's go to google first yeah let's go to the mm-hmm. googs all See? right google's and good at about working on older browsers <laughs> duck duck <laughs> quack can we go to duck duck go <laughs> kind of oh yeah there there's a search bar up there yeah i think that's Does been the work? same yeah <laughs> hey there we go <laughs> oh man <there's, laughs> Let's do the blast. Uh, let's go to live in production. Slash on the show. dot dot org. Yeah, slash dot still works. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go, everybody. So uh, yeah. go check it out. It's easy to get set up. I genuinely like no joke from just having a. We were just <laughs> chatting about it, and I'm like, fine, whatever. I downloaded the source and gave it a compile, gave it an install. Maybe five minutes total. Yeah. That's even got and, a little compile script. Yeah. So you just got to download it via Tarball from their GitHub page, and it can be compiled on whatever distribution you like, but you also have to download the dependency for the Fastlight toolkit. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's, it was like 50 megs. I mean, it yeah. tells you right there. You're like, yeah. Oh, all right. oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It tells you what you need. <laughs> it's in the Debian repo. So, you know, if you're running a Debian based distribution or if you're running Arch or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do Arch people know how to compile stuff? Oh, no, I'm yeah, sure they'll let they me know. Should, in the yeah. <laughs> no, usually they, they do or they're learning how to. <laughs> Deathly afraid. No, every time I try to bring up that, he's like, well, it's already available in the in an IUR repo, man. I'm like, yeah, but don't you want to know how to like build it? Yeah, that's part of the fun. I remember when the last version of Dillo came out, 3.05, and I built that. And it took a quite a bit longer back then. I, I just have the flashbacks to that rage comment I saw on yeah. Reddit about you stupid, smelly nerds. I just want a program I can download and run. I don't have time to be a software developer. I still think, even in 2024, um, if on your roadmap, on, on your Linux journey or whatever these people say, uh, listen, if you want to run Linux, learn how to compile stuff. Uh, you don't have to be a software developer. I'm definitely not a software developer. Absolutely mm-hmm. not how to compile stuff because you, you're missing out on a lot of fun. Yeah. You are. And just being able to take something. Yeah. How you learn the operating system. Yeah, and build systems. Learning like, how to use GitHub <laughs> and all the repositories. Right. It's all these extra yeah. skills that you pick up along the way. And that was mm-hmm. that still currently is like i'm trying to figure out thing why and i'm on step b you're gonna learn a lot of stuff to get there and yeah that should tell you whether or not linux is the right operating system for you if you look at that and you're like oh cool i get to learn all this extra stuff but if you're like yeah. you stupid smelly nerds i just want <laughs> double click on a next button and thing and make the thing it, like stay away from linux we don't want you all right <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's talk about the desk, yeah. desktop environment, because it's got a little guy in a circle, kind of like in front of him. He's waving. He's only got one arm. I feel bad yeah. for him. I buddy. guess it's a ghost. It looks like a ghost. <laughs> Stay away from Jill's ghosts, because that's what they look like, kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go check out the video version if you want. <laughs> we got a bunch going on here. Let's just go ahead and pull up some of these uh, old screenshots. Nothing crazy on that one. We're just looking at screenshots, but we got to get over to the uh, animated gif the animated gif can i <laughs> enlarge that for everybody to look at this is kind of old school because yeah. you know if you're sitting here in 2024 and you're thinking man visual memory centered skeuomorphism it died in the 90s mm-hmm. no it didn't no nope, oh, there it is <laughs> some of you might 
genuinely work better with a pile of stuff on your desk. And this might be able to help you out. You know, it's like, I need stuff over here and I need stuff over here. This brings that back just a little bit. The desk, it's got a top bar. And when you mouse over it, it expands and basically becomes a virtual desktop switcher, as we're seeing in the video version. It's very difficult to explain how it looks. And it's very whooshy going from one virtual desktop to the other. And I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I personally don't use virtual desktops. A bunch of people in the YouTube comments are like, I live that life. And I'm like, that's cool. We can still hang out. <laughs> now, yeah. it does have a quick search function. They call it, mm -hmm. well, the, he calls it, this is a one, one dude project. Uh, so he cool. calls it the, uh, what is it? Gateway. Gateway. Activates with a super button, you yeah. know, for your searches. And hey, it appears to even work on Wayland. Huh? Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm yeah. down with it. Dependencies, of course, it's done in QT and uh, yeah. Go for it. Uh, what is a gentleman's name? And, and it's integrated. You know, it's, uh, I love stuff like this because this is just one guy's like, I'm going to build my little ecosystem. And it looks very well done. Victor Tran. You know, us V's got to stick together. Go check it out. I thought I'd give this a mention since we're going down like random off kilter um, desktops as of late. I'm like, hey, this is new. Yeah. Just recently got an update. And it may or may not work with that. Uh, Wayland, if you want, like, you know, to run all of your X11 applications with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, let's talk about Libra. Ella Ick. Yeah. Ella Ick. So, I know. I, nev I never quite know. I pronounce it Libra Elec. So, yes, the Libra Elec, uh, which is the Kodi home theater based Linux distribution for embedded devices, has a new version out with some very major new features. Libra Elect 12 with the Linux 6.6 .6 long-term support kernel has been released and now supports the Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer, which a lot of is a lot of people, uh, which a lot of people in the commu Linux community have been waiting for, including myself. That that was always one of the options with the Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, um, ISO and it, and it gives you that option when you you boot up your Raspberry Pi. So now you will have that with the Raspberry Pi five and four, and it is also based on the latest Kodi twenty one Omega Media Center software. And LibreLec twelve also supports HDR on home computers running recent AMD and in and Intel GPUs. W way to go, LibreLec! And uh, to install it, you have to manually update to the new version, which isn't very hard. Um, and there are instructions available and linked in our show notes. So I wanted to give this a quick shout out because Libra Elec is one of the, the favorite OSs for the Raspberry Pi because it's just a great little media center computer. <laughs> well, that's what they say. Just enough OS for Cody. For Cody, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who this Cody character is, but oh, you know, I'm glad he doesn't require much operating system. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, if this is your gym, that's good. Like, I mean, it's working on your Pi 5. Mm -hmm. If you bought a Pi 5, and you're like, hey, there we go. And it, it works on your Pi 4. It's 64 bit operating system now. So you should be good and go. And I haven't played around with uh, Cody yet. Like, I tapped out back in the day with Myth TV mm -hmm. and, uh, I just don't watch TV anymore. <laughs> like it, it's, uh, I want to say it's gotten bad, but it's gotten good, right? Yeah. There's only yeah. like maybe the occasional <laughs> show I love. You know, I was a super early adopter of the replay TV than a TiVo. Yeah. Because I love the idea of being able to, just, not even saving shows. I only think I ever messed around with that so much. Just to be able to just pause the thing and get up and go do something else and come back and unpause it. And that is carried on later in life to where, uh, yeah, I have no, I, there's no FOMO anymore. Like, I'll get around to watching something, and what that's turned into is, like, I just start doing all this other stuff. <laughs> and, you know, you want to roll, you know, hey, we got Netflix at home, or, like, with this Cody Media repository, go for it, do it, save your stuff locally, you do you. Um, I was happy to see that. Yeah. Lebra Elk. And, yeah, it's got yeah. the wind, what is it called, wine dive, or? Oh, wi wide vine. Wide vine, Yeah. Yeah. It's got that set up, ready to go, so you can, you know, watch your uh, Netflixes and stuff like that, I guess. Like, yeah. And that's what I've used it for recently, actually. Was, okay. Yeah. That, that's Netflix. nice. That's, yeah. Like, all the Netflix and <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Services. Right. All the, all the streams, yeah. Amazon, tablets. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Yeah. 
tablets, <laughs> Android. You say what you will about me. That, that's just where I'm at <laughs> with streaming. I'm like, I got a Netflix app. I got my Amazon Prime Video thing app, whatever it's called. I got my HBO app. That's just how I do it. Because it's not that big deal for me. Like, I still have my old plasma big screen TV. Never gets mm-hmm. cut on. Yes, like, you I, do. I'm perfectly happy because how do I consume media on a 10 inch tablet, like over here somewhere? Yeah. While I'm doing yeah. something else. Like, I like the idea of like stopping and just doing new. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too squirrely for that these days, but let's go ahead and and stay on the Raspberry Pi train because. Yeah, something cool down the pipeline. Dude, you got to think about it, man. Say you needed to get back to your Raspberry Pi. You're out and about, you know, and you're like, man, I need to log into my Raspberry Pi 5. You're like, okay, traditionally, Mm -hmm. like up until very recently, what did you have to do? Man, you have to call up your butler and bug him. Be like, hey, man, I need, need you to come. And nobody's butler is like really technically literate. And if you are a technically literate butler, I'm sorry. You know, my apologies. And like walk through and set it up. Just do the thing for me. It was a big hassle. No, mm-hmm. you got to worry about it. Those days are over, kids. Don't even think twice about it. This is Raspberry Pi Connect with the switch to Wayland uh, Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm X remote. Didn't work anymore. All right. You needed something to do. This is your something to do. Pseudo apt install. RPI dash connect WebRTC under the hood. It's hitting a turn server over in the UK. That's needed for the connection. Well, if it's needed for the connection, and all it needs is Raspberry Pi five, Raspberry Pi four. You can even do it on the Pi four hundred. Yeah. And um, Connect has the ability to list all of the Pis that linked with your Raspberry Pi ID. If you need to do management, really straightforward. That was their goal here. They're like, we just need to make this as friction free as possible for you out and about to be able to log in to your Raspberry Pi with a GUI desktop to which, you know, I, I'm on the team in the audience of like SSH. What are you, what are you logging into something with a GUI on it? That's a Raspberry Pi, man. What, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I guess. From what people have said, it's working really well, even though it's still in beta. So do expect some bugs. And I, once again, this is brilliant and a Raspberry Pi at their best. You know, it's easy in with a few clicks and easy out so that's one of the reasons why the raspberry pi is is the top single board computer (laughs) the community is wonderful and their and their apps and their manuals are perfect they're awesome yeah this is something you can do yourself and uh like anybody's gonna bounce off that but like yeah if you want that little turnkey solution it like jill said it's a nice little Mm pack-in that you'll probably never need to use but it's there like yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. Like I, <laughs> I genuinely can't get through my head. Leave me a comment on the YouTube video or the Odyssey or wherever you are on the Patreon post. Yes. Like give me this use case where you need to remote. All right, no, let's roll this back. Why do you have a Raspberry Pi up and running, unattended, logged into a GUI, a graphical user, click <laughs> session? Like what is it doing? Be real here. I don't want your fanfic. And then give me a reason uh, that you yes. have that. Why you need to log in and do something to it? Why it's unattended. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm not calling you out. I genuinely want to know. Curious, yeah. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank you for showing up, hanging out, doing the thing. I got to thank a brand new patron. Never heard of this person before. No idea who they are. Completely out of the blue. I'm talking about you, Frosty. Frosty. Yeah, Frost Claw. He's back. back. Showed up in Discord. (laughs) He's like, I'm back. I'm like, hi. Yay, Frosty. (laughs) <laughs> welcome back if you want to support what we do this is how we fund it don't do it with ads i don't track your data i don't even track your downloads on the podcast man go check that out there's no tracking there just boom just take my money here have fun with it go do it uh patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast that is the umbrella thing for linux gamecast and weekly daily wednesdays and all the gaming stuff that we've been up to for the past 12 13 14 years i don't know it's been for a minute man but of course, we get that over at LinuxGameCast.com. A bunch of different ways. We got Amazon wish lists. Yes, Those are we a do. horribly bad idea. If you want to get Jill <laughs> something for a birthday, yeah. click on the Jill thing. Send in a note. We'll read it on air. Jordan's <laughs> got one. Pedro's got one. I got one for the studio. That's how you end up in this blinking wall of fiscal irresponsibility behind me. We got a merch store, Amazon storefront. If you're curious about what's in the studio, click that button. It just takes you. You don't have to buy it on Amazon. Go buy it anywhere you want. But if you're just like, hey, what's that thing? That's what that thing is. And of course, we have LibrePay, PayPal, and a bunch of different ways. 
support people to help us out. But if you currently do, you're awesome. You make this possible. You're the real MVPs. And that's why your name's in the credits now. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of credits. And here's our wonderful patrons in the credits. Our advisors, Omegas and our Theron. And our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, David, Chicago Kicks People, Empty, Blasphemia, King Bond, Super Dust Out. Sea Monsters, Truck Gills, Vera Tenuta, Justin, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, Death Notes, Rue, Turnover, Ogiwan, M. Foxton, Swine, Piper, <laughs> our chairlings, I can barely read these, Nick, Jason, Jolly. <laughs> ho, 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 we're all jolly. Hey, thanks for showing up, everybody. Come check it out and all the other fun stuff. And if you get a chance, head over to Interfacing Linux. Keep an eye on uh, what we're going to get up to with that uh, HP rising and like is this going to be a really good deal or not i Yay, hope it is I'm honestly excited. i don't i don't even know if it cuts on i know joe's like i'm thinking about buying one i'm like yeah <laughs> let old man then poke it a few times because yes. I, I really have this dream of like this is going to do all this cool stuff that so might just go i'm like all right yeah <laughs> we'll see you next week everybody <laughs> bye 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 everyone love you all